please describe the journey of KJ Somaya since inception. How did it come about? And yeah. The- so, so KJ Somaya is, uh, you know, one of the older business schools in India, particularly in Mumbai. It dates back to about 43 years since it's been started. Uh, and it is part of an educational ecosystem that was started by Padma Bhushan KJ uh, Karamshibai Somaya, was a great entrepreneur. Uh, he's no more late uh, Padma Bhushan. Um, KJ Somaya. He he only had a fifth standard education, you know, but was a great entrepreneur. Uh, made his wealth uh, in the sugar business, but had the and he was a Gandhian to the core. He was a freedom fighter, but he recognized he was a great philanthropist, and he recognized that uh, for India to progress, education is going to be key. He believed in the principle that knowledge alone liberates. And so he, whatever wealth he created, he invested into creating educational institution. And the first educational institution dates back to 82 years ago when he, when he started a school in rural Maharashtra. Since then, now in the middle of Mumbai, uh, in a 60-acre campus, uh, we have, you know, KJ Soma Institute of Management, as I said, 40 years ago. So that's really the history and legacy of this institute. My next question is, what do you think are the key features that say, that sets KJ Somaya apart from other businesses? One is obviously the long legacy that we have. So we have, you know, over, I don't know, I think 14, 15,000 alumni, many of them in very, very key positions in uh, both Indian companies and globally across the world. Um, so that's that's, you know, for a business school, the depth and breadth of alumni is very important. Second, very important is your location, right? So we are in Mumbai. And Mumbai, as you know, is the commercial capital uh, with a very, very vibrant industry. And, and because people like me with 30 years of industry experience, and there are at least another 12 adjunct faculty who have similar corporate career, including one who is to be the MD of Access Securities, uh, and several others who have had similar kind of an industry experience. We really are able to leverage this presence of the industry for the benefit of the students. We have upwards of about 45 visiting faculty who are all at different levels, CXO levels in the companies who come here and take classes and complement our own academics. Uh, in terms of taking classes. So this whole complementing theory with real practical knowledge from industry experts is a very, very differentiating feature that this institute offers. There are other, you know, intangible things, you know, as I said, 60 acres of green campus. We have an engineering college. We have an institute of design. We have the Institute of Dharma Studies. We have the Commerce College. So so as students, you can also have, and we have excellent world-class sports facilities. So from an infrastructure facility, I believe that we are also very, very differentiated. But I think perhaps over the last 12 to 18 months, uh, we have also started focusing on this concept that we call as day one ready students, yeah? where we really want our graduates to be ready. And when I say day one ready, it just doesn't mean that they are able to go and start working. It means that they are ready for a transformational journey because we believe that when students come into a business school, it is the beginning of a transformational journey. Yeah? And we are here to facilitate that transformational journey. And, uh, you know, because we, we're really here to enable great business leaders to be developed. And this is the starting point. So I think the whole philosophy of how we run the MBA program is, I believe, very important differential point, which started maybe 12 to 18 months ago. But over the next years, this philosophy will be strengthened and the graduates who come out of this school will really be ready in multiple ways to face the challenges of the corporate world. Well, what are the various MBA programs that are offered by AG? So, so we have uh, three programs that we currently offer. There is a core MBA program, which has the maximum number of seats of about 600. And and here we have a foundation year where the students in the first year go through a lot of the foundational subjects, which irrespective of what you specialize in, what function that you go into, 
is going to be very crucial for your understanding of the business and, and management. Yeah. Uh, then we have in the second year in the core MBA, they would specialize in a major subject, which could be data science, finance, HR, marketing and operations management, all the classic. In addition to that, they will also have an opportunity to take a minor, which we define as a subject that would complement your major and give you skills that enhance your ability to work in your major area or understand your major area or the skills that you develop in the major area gets amplified because of the minor. And these minors could be business analytics, a very important topic these days, data science. There are also then finance, marketing, strategy and consulting is a minor that we offer, uh, people development, operations and business economics. So that's one program. Then we have two additional programs which are very sector specific. We have an MBA sports. As you know, sports industry today is one of the uh, most rapidly growing industry in India. Um, besides IPL, the non-cricket sports are also growing quite aggressively. And this industry really needs people with management skills. So that's the basis for the sports management program. And the sports management program is also very unique because one of the things that Somaya Vidya Vihar University has is a uh, Somaya Sports Academy. Uh, which offers undergraduate program in sports, masters in sports. So we collaborate with the Spomaya Sports Academy and are able to really provide a largely experiential MBA program. Up to 40% of the learning in the MBA sports comes from experiential uh, work that the students do uh, with big sporting events. For example, this year, 10 of our MBA sports management students were actually volunteers in the International Olympic Committee meeting that happened here in Mumbai. So they were able to interact with representatives from 130 different countries, you know, learn how such large programs are, you know, designed. Uh, so that's one. And the third program is the healthcare MBA in health management or healthcare management. Uh, this again, we are unique because one of the, you know, Somaya Vidya Vihar is complemented by, by Somaya Ayur Vihar, uh, which has got a hospital, it has got a nursing school, it has got a physiotherapy school, and it has got an Ayurveda school. So the students of the MBA healthcare, while studying in the institute, are also getting experiential learning in our sister uh, institutions, which are devoted to healthcare. So those are the three big programs that we have. When should students choose their specialization when they come in? Because uh, you have the uh, yeah. MBA, um, core MBA. So yes. there is a specialization. The choice yeah. of, uh, yeah, specialization is difficult simply because once you choose and then you don't like it. That is one of the big things that many students find in nation. Yeah. Yeah. So how do they do at KJ uh, Somaya? How is this? So they will the the timing from a choice is the fourth trimester and the fifth and sixth trimester they go into the specialization. Okay, it's a very valid point what you brought out. You know because students are you know sometimes not sure how do I choose a specialization. Uh, there is generally a herd mentality, right? Finance is the fashion of the year. Everyone goes into finance. If it is marketing, everyone tends to go to market. So we have become very acutely aware of this issue and we have introduced a very interesting new approach to solve this problem. All our students in the first year go through a competency assessment with a professional agency from outside. So every student and the competencies are competencies that we have identified through research and through talking to a lot of industry people, generic competencies that any corporate industry uh, is expecting their MBA students to have. Armed with this, we are able to now counsel the students that based on your competency this and your aptitude, this is the thing that you are likely to be very successful and likely to enjoy kind of taking off. Uh, we believe this is something that we have just started. Uh, we believe this is one way to help counsel our students and make them understand what would be the right specialization for. Quite interesting actually, because it's very important. 
Many times, uh, like herd mentality, marketing people to keep to go and market. Exactly. <laughs> We have had cases where people have taken a specialization middle of the semester. They come back and say, "I don't like this, or I'm finding it difficult. Yeah. Can I change?" So hopefully, with this, you know, we will be able to counsel them better. On my next question comes in when work experience has a, a certain weight. Yes. Would that affect? Uh, how does it affect a fresh graduate? Because there are many <laughs> students who also come out of college and then apply for an MBA because they feel with an MBA the chances of a career is. much more better so how does that figure out if you have a work experience yeah. or not so you know look the first year i think some of this relates to the philosophy of the business school right and we believe that the cohort in a business school needs to be a very diverse cohort right wow. and and hence we do believe that you know any class there should be freshers a certain proportion of freshers and a certain proportion of people with work experience wow. and we are trying to balance this so in that attempt to balance it we as we do have very very clear kind of additional marks for work experience so it it ranges from if you have 25 to 36 months work experience you will get 10 marks if you have only 12 to 24 you get 6 6 marks and then as you go up if you have 37 to 48 months the marks reduces 6 marks uh, 49 to 60 months 4 marks and more than 61 months of experience you only get 2 marks because for people who have such long experience you have a different program you have an executive mba program you know which is what they should be going so ideally we have found that a good complement to an a classroom would be about 40% of students who have about you know anywhere from 24 to 36 months of work experience and that's what we are targeting now. makes a lot of sense actually five years plus uh, or even then uh, mm-hmm. makes sense to go for a regular mba absolutely they should go for an executive mba they should, they should. Yeah. um then uh, there is always uh, this parity that most engineering graduates crack that there is a higher number of because of the nature yeah. of their studies and all so how does uh, kg somia balance this uh, academic disparity because there are yeah. others who need to come so out. again very very clear philosophy so as i said uh, mm-hmm. we really believe in having a uh, yeah, diverse cohort whether it is from the background of the education they did or from even geographically yeah so our uh, whole admission process is trying to look at this balance right so we you know internally we have a certain target not more than maybe 40 45% of engineering students and then the rest come from very diverse cohort including liberal arts you know we are even saying you know we need to have people with specializations like psychology and maybe languages to come into because that's what industry needs today right people with very diverse mindset and i think students also uh, the students experience is completely different when they have such mixed group of students studying in a class and uh, because their interactions and they look at the problems all of this is very different and they learn from each other so yeah that's a philosophy behind so we don't want to give undue preference to engineers because of course their quantitative aptitude but we believe that there has to be a certain proportion of engineers but certain proportion of commerce students liberal arts students and students with very very diverse background and that's that's our admission approach to what about the gender diversity is there any particular quota or a particular section that is mandated uh-huh. for women no we don't we don't have a quota but i'm happy to say that our gender diversity is fairly good uh, compared to some business schools that we have like 23 25 batch we have uh, 39% uh, women and 61% male yes it would be nice to have 50 50 but i think you know we are we are kind of constantly striving for a higher proportion but yeah that 60 40 is a good ratio i believe yes, yes it is <laughs> when you compare it to the Uh, uh, so what are the new initiatives that have been introduced uh, recently by KJ Somia <coughs> for a robust admission process uh, has come up so so the new areas that we are really looking at for a robust process is at you know for example introduction of the personal interview where we will be really using the competency based interviewing technique to really identify what are the competencies uh, you know we have some identified competencies about six or seven of them which we believe uh, enables if you have those competencies it enables you to be better successful in a business school environment so a lot of focus is on how do we use as objective a technique as a competency based interviewing technique to really identify those students 
who are likely to thrive in a business school uh, better. Uh, so that's really one. Uh, we have also introduced, again, group discussion. We are looking at specific competencies that uh, uh, students have. We have also introduced up to 10% weightage for the returnability test, which we didn't have before, uh, because we believe that this is also a very, very important skill, you know, to be ability to think and communicate that, you know, is very important. So, so I would say those are some initiatives which we have introduced to ensure fairness and robustness of our admission process. which reminds me of a, a question because there are uh, people uh, or students who are um, who have studied in the regional uh, languages so yeah. uh, communication in english may not be as good as you know the regular uh, students of actually studied in the medium yes. english medium for now yeah so yeah. Uh, how does uh, kj somaya you know uh, choose to pick up these students? Uh, how yeah. does the admission process So work? it's a great point. And I think this has been a very, very important topic that we have discussed. And I can tell you our chancellor is absolutely committed to saying that, you know, it doesn't matter what is the language. It is about your ability to communicate. That is very important. And, you know, clarity of thinking, which then results in. So I don't have an answer. I think we'll have to go, go through this admission season, but we recognize that it is not just ability to communicate in English that is important. The first thing is your ability to think clearly and then to be able to articulate that, whether it is in a native language or in English, you know. But yes, uh, I, I agree with you completely. Uh, and we have a lot of students in our cohorts even now. Uh, who would communicate beautifully in their native tongue, whether it is Hindi or local, and who have a little bit of a challenge, you know, when it comes to maybe articulating. But, you know, the fact is that you are be much more successful if you are able to communicate in minimum two languages, maybe even in more, right? Because today we are in a globalized environment. So I think our aim is not to say if you're not able to do well, in English, you will not be qualified. We are looking for ability to communicate. But I think more importantly, then when they come here, to be able to say, great, you communicate very well in Hindi or in Tamil or in Bengali, but it would be a complementary skill to be able to have that same communication ability, perhaps in a language like English, which at least now is still one of the common ways to communicate in a public what are the scholarships that are available to students because there are many students who come from the lower strata they need yeah. so we have you know the somaya vidya vihar university has a financial aid yeah which is applicable to all the constituent institutes within the university and kj somaya should have management is also eligible for that and this is for any family uh, anyone who comes with a family whose income is below 8 lakhs per annum yeah and also for people with disabilities you know so it is applicable and the level of uh, scholarship that is given could be anywhere from 20% all the way to 100% of your tuition fee etc uh, and there are you know committees and uh, very transparent processes on which how this is decided. Okay, so that's one. There is also this financial aid, even wards of defense personnel, either disabled or deceased while in line of duty are also eligible for this financial aid. Okay. But in addition to that, as of last year, we have introduced a merit scholarship, which is 100% tuition waiver. And, and last year, we have offered it to four deserving, in fact, we had five scholarships available uh, through the various processes. There were four students who were found eligible, uh, and that is purely merit-based criteria. Uh, and so that's an additional kind of a scholarship, merit-based scholarship that is available. Uh, Kj Somaya uh, has accreditations, which are, if you look at accreditations, they are paramount to every uh, school in general, especially to business schools. <clears throat> and uh, Kj Somaya has. <laughs> AASCB, which is only few institutions, 16 to 18, have them. Yeah. NIRF ranking is also excellent. So 
the question for a student comes what is the contribution of the accreditations uh, what do the accreditations contribute to the institution how do they benefit from these so the way that accreditation what is an accreditation an accreditation is a stamp of approval of a certain so acsb for example is a global accreditation now there are only about less than 6% of business schools across the world which has got the acsb accreditation the acsb accreditation basically when you get the accreditation it tells you that this business school has processes teaching pedagogy which is of global standard only then they will give you that so when a student comes and you know looks at a acsp accredited versus a non accredited the assurance that the person gets is when i go to this business school with the accreditation i am going into an institute which has been globally uh, or their processes as is of global standards and there is a global agency which has put their stamp of approval after several years of you know preparation visits investigations etc so, so it's a quality assurance right there are also other benefits you know so in the student see typically if you want to go to an american school for let's say higher education etc if you're going from an acsb accredited institution you know there is a certain level of credibility for your transcripts and degree etc so that's the other uh, student exchange programs become much easier so those from a student's perspective those are some of the benefits for for studying in a acsp accredited institution now nir of ranking of course it's a ranking is a different kind of a, it's not an accreditation it looks at several parameters and it is a relative kind of thing you know it tells you how are you compared to somebody else uh so i would say while ranking is interesting and important i would say the accreditation which is the stamp of approval is something that students should look for thinking sir because um it, to keep that accreditation also the institute has to constantly innovate and absolutely. keep up to it absolutely it cannot be that you got the accreditation and then you let go of things you know uh, yeah, so yeah. that's one of the biggest things that students should understand and accreditation is very important for students to look into absolutely which we at kdc we always emphasize please look at these factors too yes it's not just um, placements and stuff so uh, my next question will be like a holistic development now that is a term that is uh, <laughs> very much in, in. Yeah. so how does the institute uh, contribute or facilitate holistic development of students uh, i'm very i'm happy you asked this question because this is where i take a lot of pride in some of the new things that we are bringing in in our mba education program uh, let me first tell you that we now have introduced something which is called as the student progression index uh, which because you know it goes back to my original statement we look at the two years as a, like a transformation journey of the individual we recognize that you know this development has to be holistic it's not just about learning a few skills like excel spreadsheets or business analytics or ai and ml it needs to go beyond to develop you as a good leader as a good human being so what are we doing about this so the student progression index uses about 5 to 6 parameters 45% weightage is for your academic cgpa and things like that so we monitor this across we now have a initiative here where every week all the students who come in are divided into groups of 10 to 15 and assigned a mentor faculty and every week we send out an article either from the global magazine called economies or from a business magazine called as the ken which is a digital business magazine uh, i ask the students to read it and by end of the week they have to kind of answer a few reflective questions or the mentor might choose that read this and come and we're going to have a group discussion on this now the whole objective of this is that students need to be able to relate what they study in the class to what is happening nationally in their business world and globally in the geopolitical context right so that's the whole objective of this and also to inculcate this habit of reading which as we know our generation is rapidly losing and when you lose this every week in and week out in the beginning it's difficult because you don't understand what's written in economist but from personal experience i know that over a period of time these things can be addictive and they can be very very you know what we call a serendipitous thinking you know where you suddenly come up with an insight it comes because all these dots are data points that you have in your mind by reading these things over a long period of time suddenly come together so we believe that students will have enormous benefits 
you know, later on in their life by this. So that's one initiative. We give 15% weightage for that. We give 10% weightage for students participating in competitions, you know, case study competition. 10% weightage for industry-led certifications. We encourage students to go and get certifications. 10%, yeah, yeah. we have an event here now we call it Careers and Conversations, where every month we invite CEOs and CXOs. And mostly I lead a conversation with them as what did it take for them to have that career? You know, what are the important decisions that they took? What went wrong? You know, what went right? Because we want the students to really understand that career, if MBA is not the beginning and end of a career. There is there's a lot of very important things that happen in life, which makes a very uh, important career. Uh, we give 10% weightage and last 10% is we give them for physical fitness and participating in sports. So that's the student progression index. And we believe this is a way to tell the students that this is about a very comprehensive holistic development, which will really, it's about how it's going to help them when they leave the college and go out. You know, some of these practices will really help them to have a better life and a better care. Like in current times, technology, sustainability, liberal education. These are major role players for most yeah. businesses. So how has KJ Somaya facilitated and balanced these in its curriculum? Because it's very yeah. important to have them. So let me first talk about technology. So <laughs> one of the degrees that KJ Somaya Institute of Management offers is also a master in computer applications. So we have a data science department with people who are specialists in, you know, data science, AI, ML, etc. So all the students who come to study here in their foundation year, they are already studying things like Python, R programming, AI, ML, and there is enough faculty resource who can help them with this technology thing. Because we have the MCA program, it is one of our oldest programs. It's been going on, I think, for the, probably 20, 25 years. We have a lot of alumni who are in tech companies who come and talk to the MBA students about changes that are happening in the technology. And, you know, so they really get <clears throat> both theoretical and practical kind of experience on how technology is important and uh, how functional expertise and appreciation of technology becomes extremely important for you to be successful in the corporate world. Yeah. Sustainability is an equally important topic. We have we we now have made this a mandatory foundation course. We have an ESG course, which is a mandatory foundation course. We are actively, for example, on Friday, we had a three-day international waste management conference which was hosted by the KJ Soma Institute of Management. And about 40 of our students were involved in hosting that conference, being part of that conference. And on that two, and, and, and we had something like participants from 40 different countries. So it is a rich exposure on what is sustainability, how important it has become, you know, the whole concept of net zero. So, so those two are extremely well covered. Liberal education, I talk to you about how we are looking to include students with liberal arts background, etc. to join us. Specifically on liberal education, some of the things that we are trying to do, and when I when you talk about liberal education, to me it is more about enabling students to appreciate the diversity, appreciate the inequality, appreciate the importance of social justice. So there are two things. We do a lot of work. Our students do a lot of work with uh, NGOs and organizations yeah. uh, because in within the Somaya ecosystem, we have a lot of schools where students go and teach, they mentor school children. So this is one way that we are introducing this uh, appreciation of contribution to society as a very important part of being a citizen. Then uh, the next question that comes up is practical training because uh, without that, uh, any courses uh, practically not of much use. Yeah. So, uh, how has uh, KJ Somaya incorporated yeah. practical training into the curriculum? Yeah. So there are three ways. You know, one one of course is that every course the theory is complemented with visiting faculty from the industry who really talk about how does that concept work in the real world. So they learn from practitioners about this. Yeah. So I said for a you know we have a faculty strength of eighty seven. We have upwards of 45 to 50 visiting faculty who come in on a regular basis from industry and who talk about it. And then we have adjunct faculties 
who have had their career throughout their life in industries who are now here and those interactions provide that uh, practical experience but there are three other ways that we do this one is live projects so a lot of our alumni and we actively solicit live projects where our students are involved so they get practical experience sometimes they get paid depending on the importance of the job summer internship like all other business schools our students go for summer internship in the month of may and june but i think this year for example this academic year we introduced the concept of a capstone project and the capstone project starts in the third trimester and goes all the way to fifth trimester yeah so almost for a 6 to 9 month period they are doing projects with a company and that taking a problem statement of a company and really trying to address that problem statement using everything that they have learned yeah so we have also designed for example a lot of our classes happen in the morning or in the afternoon so that there is a very clear period of time when students who are doing capstone projects can go and visit this you know industry that they are assigned or attached with uh, so this is the third and this is a very important in the past we used to have what is called as a research project where most M mba students would attach themselves to faculty and learn research so now we are giving them an option of capstone which is actively working with solving industry problem or doing research right with the faculty there is a rapidly changing technological world and innovations yeah. are just like very fast so the curriculum has also to change uh, for most of the institute so how what are the innovations and changes that have been brought by kg somaya in this regard because if you see you have mba specializations that were not there in the earlier times now apart from the core specialization we have ai we have data sciences we have you have a sports management which is a unique course so you know look this is an interesting topic and i all i can say is that mm -hmm. we have constant reviews for example we have the board of studies where we have people from industry who are kind of giving input but more importantly i think we are now looking at every course uh, because one of the challenges in mba is there is a lot of courses that you can teach right and sometimes it very becomes very difficult to really prioritize which is more important which is less important which can be so i would say that the the innovation is on two fronts our choice of courses right so we have a framework to decide which course should be taught and which course perhaps we can leave out now because the relevance of that is no longer for you know for an mba student the framework involves questions like does this course make my student day one ready does this course provide technological kind of appreciation so those are the kind of factors that we look at and carefully debate and decide which course should be taught the second part is the innovation and and here uh, again we are rapidly transitioning i mean we have always used case study methodology as a very important tool but we are trap but there were been certain subjects which were assumed that you cannot use case studies in this subject but th that's been proven wrong and we are saying you know uh, we really need to bring in case studies and discussions because it is about enabling the students to think critically enable you know teaching the students the skill of integrative thinking teaching the students the skill of how do you work with other students debate with other students and come up with solutions and not you know i will do so that's the other you know how do we use this classic case study method more and more into this the third area where we are really increasing our tools and commitment is to simulate right. we have now simulations in supply chain we have simulations in erp in addition to the financial simulations like bloomberg terminal so we are also relying heavily on simulations and games even marketing digital marketing simulation tools you know so that's the third area uh, so we are you know excellent now digital labs uh, we have bloomberg terminals within the institute where students can you know kind of uh, spend uh, hours practicing uh, you know how to pick stocks etc uh, so these are all multiple kind of innovations that we are bringing in in addition to this we are now in the process of setting up what you will call as a communications lab where students can learn how to communicate better right i mean these are all voluntary we are building a social sciences cell where you know you asked about liberal education but this is all work in progress and the students who come in in this batch will get to use some of these infrastructure we are currently uh, my next question is the placement because this is very important whenever 
can even choose a college or an institute they first look at that yeah. so how is the placement process uh, how does it go because many of them also have this uh, doubt about how does it go what should my contribution be how is the support from the institute so if we throw some light on those so we have uh, operational placement team right uh, with about five six team members who are employees of the institute who are responsible for sector specific kind of you know companies but students play a very active role also right so there's the placement committee uh, the placement committee members are the ones who you know really take the lead in identifying the companies bringing them on board what kind of roles so there is an infrastructure there is there is a students involvement supported by regular employees who are dedicated to the placement in the institute we have a large alumni base which helps this process but i think the most important thing is we have realized that preparing students cannot be done one month before the placement season so we now are having a program where from the day that they enter this business school the thought about how do we prepare the students for a better placement experience will start now I told you earlier about how all our incoming students go through a competent competency assessment with a third party agency that's the starting point of that so when we know a student's strengths and areas of development we are able to better prepare them also for the placement so i would say these are three very very important pillars of our placement process um then my question is the uh, last placement statistics if you could just throw some light on those so last year we had 100% placement highest package was uh, 28.25 lakhs per annum uh, our average package for the top 100 students was 17 lakhs top 200 was 15.4 the major sectors that we catered to is bfsi it consulting and fmcg major companies that came in are rccm loda group decathlon mercedes benz tata capital deutsche bank deloitte consulting michael page maruti suzuki london stock exchange general mills we have also had for the first time maruti suzuki and mercedes benz coming in last year we had actually a total number of 115 ppos which is pre placement offers you know after they finished their internship of which 89 students actually accepted the ppo is that a good enough uh, yes, overview yes that is yes <laughs> actually students do look for those kind of statistics because they understand. just uh, don't read the brochures so it's quite yeah. easy to get a wrap up on these things my But last my, question my only recommendation to student is the first job salary is not a reflection of how your career evolves you know you should be focused on your third year salary the first few years are pillars you know you build the steps to a good career my last question to you sir would be what would your advice be to any management as what what are the factors you think or because you've been seeing so many students so what would your advice be to them? my advice to them is that uh, you know when they join a business school they should you make full use of a few things right one is the network that they build right so take time to build that network both with faculty learn discipline right because people who succeed in life are people who are disciplined so if you come into a post graduate institution saying i will have a lot of fun and party i think you are kind of looking at it the wrong way this is where you have to learn discipline and of course learning that goes without saying right i mean you come into a business school to learn how to learn and learn some of the basic skills so please be sincere to that uh, and last you know really make use of all the resources that are available i mean you come into a institute like kjsm you know you may have a cohort of 60 70 students in your class but there are 30000 students in this university right and there are so many events that happen we have an incubation center that at any point in time incubates hundreds startups from healthcare to biotech to hardcore engineering kind of thing you know really develop network beyond that 60 students or your roommate in the uh, and learn what is going on and more importantly when you are in mumbai you know really need to leverage the industry ecosystem that exists here so that would be my really you know think of it as a really a transformation kind of journey that you will have and uh, use every day and every resource that is there to your advantage wonderful advice thank you so much it was a very insightful interview thank you for being on board thank you for the opportunity <laughs>